Howdy folks, I've got a project this week for you. This is Hacker Monday, so we're gonna do a hack job, whatever, but <laughs> we're gonna do a project. I'm gonna do this with you. I've already done one, but I'm gonna do another one so you can see the basic dimensions and how to lay this thing out so it'll make it work for you. I will bet you that you don't have one. I'll bet you you could probably use one, because we all need one. <laughs> and what is it? It's the, it's the tool that doesn't really seem to go in the toolbox very well. And it's also the tool that is always piled up with a bunch of more of them. And it's these right here, hammers. I have a large number of hammers, different hammers for different projects. And I've got way too many of these nailing hammers. Probably should get rid of a couple, get some more mechanics hammers in here, right? So I can really hit something. But uh, I'm not talking about sledge, you know, or the big heavy headed, you know, sledge type hammers, or even the five pound sledge for that matter. But just basic nailing hammers around the shop I like to keep you know well I've got I've got seven hammers that I like to use so what I like to do is keep the hammers uh, in a rack or something where I can just go over and grab the one I want use it put it back in the rack so let's just go ahead and go forward let's get some lumber I'm gonna get you up here on the table so you can see exactly what I'm doing and I'm gonna lay out a couple of pieces scrap wise you need some uh, three and a half by three quarter inch piece of wood, uh, pine, whatever, scrap, maybe about two feet long. It could be shorter, it could be longer, depending on how many hammers you have, of course. <clears throat> there's, there's a problem. And uh, I'll lay this out on the table and I'll show how I, I laid mine out. And you could just copy or do the same thing if you want, or you can modify it or come up with something a little bit better or whatever. But I'll show you what I did. And that way you can build yourself a little hammer rack and you know they're easy to lay out right now. So this piece here is well, about three and a half inches. That's ideal because when you're measuring your hammer, you're going to want to be around three and a half inches. You're right just past the handle right about here. So, uh, and this piece here is just a piece of scrap from a project, but it measures, I'm going to say barely, yeah, maybe three quarter. And it's just a cheap scrap piece of pine at this point. It's kind of junky. And so what we're going to do is we want to center, so we're going to measure off, let's do it this way so you guys, yeah, this is, uh, so I'm going to measure this off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to space my ham hammers out and I'm going to start over on this end, can you, yeah. I'm going to start at this end and then I'm going to make two inches the first place where my hammer is going to land and every two inches looks like a pretty good comfortable space so we'll just go to two, 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 two. Whoops. Hmm. See that? Even on YouTube you can do that. Yeah, how about that? Okay, so so we'll we'll say let's make that 14, not, not 13. Duh. And now the actual spacing for the hammer, for the handle, at least for this to sit in that rack, and you're going to need two pieces of this, okay, because there's going to be a bottom piece too. So you want about one inch should do pretty much any handle that I've seen anyways around. This is this handle actually measures about five eighths, but a one inch slot is a real nice thing. So now that we've got these two inches centered, marked out, and I'm going to, <laughs> we'll do this, just mark them with the C. We don't care, because this is the shop, right? Nothing, nothing fancy. Now I'm gonna come back, and now I'm gonna measure a half inch on either side of the center and make that my box. You know, this is what I'm going to be cutting out. So, so far, so good. Are we doing good? We're doing good, right? And this is what we're going to do. Now, at that point, you're going to bring these lines all the way up here. And the slot should be approximately an inch and a half deep. Okay, so, and again, I'm just explaining that because this is a simple project, but I even put an X there because this is the scrap that's going to be cut out. But at an inch and a half, let's see if we can get that. Yeah, an inch and a half, it's right about there. This is pretty raw, yeah. I'm not using all my fancy gear. I know, I know. And so we're gonna come back here. So these are the slots we're gonna take out. And when we take these out, there's a couple of ways to do it. We could run it and slot it and just take it through the uh, table saw and cut this side and this side right through and then just slowly chop away at it. What I did for my project was I ran this 
each side of this through the bandsaw to cut and then cut across and back and forth until I got all the meat, you know, out of these slots. But that's how simple it is. And this will leave you a little bit of a room on the end because what you're going to need is when you install this is underneath it, you're going to put one of these L brackets in. And this is a three inch by three quarter L bracket. So you're going to be installing it like that up underneath to hook that to the wall or drive it into whatever, you know, whatever means of uh, you're going to put whatever means of attachment you're going to use. I used two of these and for the kit in order to get my hammer. And depending on how many you have, like I said, count your hammers out and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's, there's how many I had, but you might want another one out here for eight hammers or 10 hammers or whatever it is. So all the hammers are in there and they all go into that slot. That's the top. This is this is actually, I guess we'll say, let's see if I can do that upside down. That's pretty talented, yeah. This is the top that we're looking down, and this is the slots we're going to be taking out. So that each hammer will go into this like this all the way along. Simple, no-brainer, easy peasy, right? Now, the bottom one is going to be totally different. It's going to be like this. Again, piece of scrap. And I would suggest go ahead and use the three and a half by three quarter, whatever it is, piece of scrap lumber you have. Lengthwise, I made mine over length so I could use some shelving back here for glue and other related woodworking project things that, that, that I you know that I have. But you don't have to do that. You could cut it off at this point and just say, well, I just want to put hammers up here. I don't want anything else. And also take a look at the space you have in your shop. It might, that might vary too. Now let's talk about the bottom piece. Bottom piece is very similar, but what I do is I cut a V instead of a square. And the reason I use a V, let's take a look at that. That's an interesting thing. I really like V shape. When you have something round and you have different amounts of, say, a round shape, it might the diameter might vary between these two, but you want them both to fit into a slot somewhere. I find the V, oh, heck, let's use this guy right here. I find the V shape does the trick because no matter what size the circle is, well within reason of course, the V will always act as a rest to where the hammer handle at the bottom. Because some of these are round, a little bit rounded, some of them are a little more square, some of them are you know really flat, but with the V they'll always sit in the V. So when you cut your V, you can even cut it a little shallow if you like, which I, which I have a tendency to do. I only went in about an inch with the V like this in order to create the, the second. And that would be the, uh, I guess we'll call it the, let's see if I can do that upside down too. Yeah, the bottom. Look at that, wow, upside down. Uh, the bottom piece will just have a V, which again lines up the same thing. Measure out, you know, two inch centers, and then mark a V that, that opens up to about a, an inch each way. So in other words, off the center, you're going to be half inch this way, half inch that way, and that'll give you your V shape. And how you cut the V, again, same thing. You could do it by hand with a hand saw, or you could do it on a band saw. Uh, a band saw is nice if you have one. If you only have a hand saw, then you can cut these with your hand. Uh, hand saw. Uh, the other thing you could use is a coping saw. If you just so happen to have one laying around, I haven't seen a coping saw in years. Some people, newbies, probably don't even know what a coping saw is, but yeah, it was a pretty crude uh, saw in its day, but I think they're still around in existence. Again, might have to get some uh, comments about the coping saws. <laughs> Do they still exist? Or the Japanese saw would be really, you know, cool to cut the V's out, and that'll give you your bottom plate. Now, the distance uh, between the top, the top, obviously the hammer's going to sit Let's see if I can show this. Uh, do it that way. I don't know. The hammer's going to sit like that. So you don't want to go too down, too far down on the handle. You want to come down about, you know, roughly just a, an average area. So when you drop it to the bottom plate here, you want to be a, somewhere around nine and a half inches, say ten at the very most. I wouldn't go. It wouldn't even go that deep. I think I would stick to the nine inch and right about here. And that way, when you put your handles in, all your handles will all hit the V on this piece of lumber here. And that's what you want. So that'll give you a hammer. And let's take a quick picture, look at mine, and I'll, I'll show it to you. 
Okay, so here we are with the one I've got, and you can see from the top of this to the center of this one is, in this case, nine inches. So the actual space, say, off the bottom to the top is about uh, about seven and three quarter inch. But these are one by three, three and a half. Excuse me, I keep saying three. One by three and a half. <laughs> we'll put that up somewhere where you can see that. And then there's your square slot which is going to allow your hammer to just go in there top. And then the V is just sort of help keep the handle so that the hammer doesn't, you know, lean back and end up falling out of, out of there. You don't want that. If you have kids at the house, you might want to put a screw in here with a little hook and put a bungee cord across here to keep the hammers tight against the wall so they don't fall on somebody's feet or something. But I'm over a workbench. So, you know, I, I've got it made here as far as that goes. I, I don't have any problem with it. but. And then as you can see, when I made my shelf long, and I was able to put these pieces here, I also shortened the top shelf a little bit, just so I get the silly glue bottle in here, but anything tall could sit in you know, that area. But that's a basic hammer rack, but it's a great little wood project, and it won't take you long, and uh, you should have a lot of fun doing it, because you lose a couple different odd tools that normally maybe you, know, you might not use. Man, what an easy project, right? Get to work, come on, go make your hammer rack. <laughs> yeah, and uh, thank you for so much again, like always, for watching Coffee and Tools, and please like, share, and subscribe, and you know what? That was Monday. Thursday, we got new tool day. Oh, ho, 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 ho. we're going we're gonna to burn something, I believe, but for now, guys, thanks for watching, and adios.